today's topic is congestion control. So let's uh, start with today's topic. First, what is congestion? Network congestion in data networking in Queen Theory is the reduced quality of service that occurs when a network node or a link is carrying more data than it can handle. Typically, effects include queen delay, packet loss, or blocking of a new connection. So, uh, the network congestion is whenever a traffic on the network is greater as compared to its bandwidth. This is called a congestion. Whenever there is more traffic, so what it means automatically when the traffic is more, the delay is more. Delay, uh, or you can say the transmission time is more. So what will happen whenever, uh, suppose we are uh, sending some data towards uh, anyone and we are using the network and the network capacity is, for example, the network uh, is able to handle the 100 packets at the same time, for example. And whenever the, uh, the number of packets, they are increasing by the 100, then this situation is known as congestion. Means whenever a number of packets goes beyond the capacity of that network this is called congestion so now uh, the next is the congestion control uh, congestion control is a method used for monitoring the process of regulating the total amount of data entering the network so as to keep traffic levels at an acceptable value this is done in order to avoid the telecommunication network reaching what is termed via consecutive collapse. So what it means, what is congestion control? The congestion control basically uh, is a method to control the congestion. And uh, in simple words, we can say, uh, if we want to control the congestion, then we have to monitor the, uh, then we have to monitor the total amount of data that is entering on that particular network or you can say we have to monitor each and every packet that is transmitted on a particular network so it depends upon uh, the capacity of that network or you can see the bandwidth of the network depends upon that value we easily come to know about the how many number of packets they are traveling at the same time so if we are able to uh, calculate the total value and uh, only uh, transmitted only those packets who comes under the category of this bandwidth value, then we are able to uh, control the congestion control in a particular network. So uh, we have uh, <clears throat> the different uh, congestion prevent policies are there. With the help of these policies, we are able to uh, prevent the congestion or we can say we are able to uh, prevent the congestion problem in a particular network. So uh, uh, next is the congestion prevention policies. Congestion control refers to the techniques used to control and prevent the congestion control techniques can be broadly classified into the two categories. Uh, and these two categories are basically uh, congestion con prevent policies can be categorized into the two categories. And these two categories are the first is open loop congestion control and second one is closed loop congestion control so uh, we have the two congestion uh, control techniques are there with the help of these techniques we easily prevent the congestion or you can say we easily manage the number of packets that are traveling on the particular network so let's start uh, discussing the first the first is the open loop congestion control open loop congestion control policies are applied to prevent congestion before it happens. So what it means, open loops are those congestion control uh, policies which can be applied to prevent the congestion before it happens. The congestion control is handled either by the source or by the destination. Now, the, in this case, the congestion can be controlled by both the parties, either by the center side or by the receiver side. And we apply these policies on the network whenever we have an estimate that the congestion might be occurred. So to uh, overcome this type of problem that the congestion can be happened 
in our network and we face the number of problems due to the congestion so we go for the open loop congestion controls we can easily prevent these uh, congestion problems before it happens so uh, the policies adopted by the open loop congestion controls are the first one is the uh, retransmission policy it is the policy in which retransmission of the packets are taken care if the sender feels that a sent packet is lost or corrupted the packet needs to be retransmitted this transmission may increase the congestion in the network to prevent the congestion a retransmission timer must be designed to prevent congestion and also able to optimize efficiency so uh, this is the first technique and the name of the technique is retransmission policy retransmission means we are going to retransmit the packets towards to the receiver side suppose i just give you an example suppose a sender sends the data and that data is not received by the receiver so what will happen a receiver doesn't send the acknowledgement to the sender whenever acknowledgement is not received by the sender so sender comes to know that my packets are not received by the receiver side so it can retransmit all the packets whenever it retransmit all the packets what will happen all the packets can again transmitted from sender to the receiver so the number of times the acknowledgement is not received and the number of users who doesn't receive the acknowledgement for their packet they all are retransmit the uh, packets again and again but in this policy we designed we designed a timer we designed a retransmission timer so what it means we basically defined a particular time window that if your acknowledgement is not received you have to wait for 2 minutes if within these 2 minutes acknowledgement is not received then again you have to wait for 3 minutes then you retransmit the data so this is called the retransmission timer so what it means we can give the these timer windows different timer windows to the different users suppose someone gives a 2 uh, minute timer window to the user number 1 someone gives a 3 uh, minute time uh, timer window to the user number 2 and uh, to the user number 3 we only give the 30 second timer window so what will happen suppose if all the three users who sends the data and the acknowledgement is not received by them so what will happen first user have to wait for 2 minutes after 2 minute it retransmit the data user 2 they have to wait for 3 minutes after 3 minute it retransmit the data and user number 3 he has to wait for 30 seconds so what will happen the retransmission time is different for user 1 after 2 minutes for user 2 after 3 minute for user 3 after 30 seconds if now compare this policy with the normal process if the timer window is not there what will happen all the three users they didn't get the acknowledgement so at the same time they sends the they 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 send they retransmit the data at the same time whenever all these three users they retransmit the data at the same time what will happen the number of packets they all all the n number of packets they are traveling at the same time so there might be a problem of congestion to overcome this problem they re, they use the retransmission policy this is the first one now the second one is window policy the the type of window at the sender side may also affect the congestion several packets the go back and window are resend although some packets may be received successfully at the receiver side uh the duplication may increase the congestion in the network and making it worse therefore selective repeat window should be adopted as it sends the specific packet that may have been lost so second one is window policy now we are going to make a window policy for every user what will happen in this policy the sender sends the data suppose i am a sender you are a receiver i sends the 100 packets towards your side now if you are receiving a 20 packets suppose you are not receiving the 21st packet you simply not acknowledge that packet whenever acknowledgement of that packet is not received i am not able to come to know that how many number of packet that is not received by receiver side so i retransmit all the packets i retransmit all the packets of this transaction so this will cause a congestion on the network 
to overcome this problem in this technique what will happen a selective repeat window is there so what is the function of selective repeat window now only a selective acknowledgement of a unreceived packets can be sent by the receiver to the sender side so what will happen suppose i send you 10 packets you received the six packets and the packets that are not received by you is suppose packet number 2 3 9 10 so in the case of selective repeat window you only send the negative acknowledgement for the 2 3 9 10 10 whenever i receive that acknowledgement what will happen again when i am going to retransmit the packets i only retransmit these four packets but if we compare this with the normal technique in that case i have to send all the 10 packets because i didn't uh, receive any acknowledgement so i am not able to uh, come to know that uh, how many packets are received by the receiver side and how many packets are not received by the receiver side so this is all about the window policy now the third the third is discarding policy now <clears throat> a good discarding policy adopted by the uh, routers in the is that the root router or router the router may prevent congestion and at the same time partially discards the corrupted or less sensitive package and also able to maintain the quality of the message so what will happen discard policy is there who will discard the uh, package who is responsible for this discardation a routers are responsible for this discard policy what will happen whenever a number of packets that are received by the router then again the router further sends to the destination host so what will happen whenever these packets are received at the router side the packets who have who are corrupted first the router go through with all the packets there uh, uh, in some uh, packets if uh, there is still a problem or you can say some packets are corrupted so simply the corrupted packets are discarded by the router or <clears throat> some less sensitive packages less sensitive packages means uh, some packages or some packets who are only containing a normal value or you can say the normal data that is not uh, that much uh, sensitive for the receiver they these packets can also be discarded by the routers so suppose a router receive a 100 packets out of these 100 packets 20 are uh, get corrupted so simply it discarded all the 20 packets and suppose the 10 packets are less sensitive it only it, it simply discarded these 10 packets also so what will happen 30 packets are discarded by the router so what will happen only the 70 packets it go through for the next hole and this uh, in the case of audio transmission routers can discard less sensitive packets to prevent the congestion and also maintain the quality of the audio file this can be happen in the case of audio files whenever uh, audio files are received by the router and the packets who having the less sensitive data in between that packets or you can say the helping files are there that are not necessary simply the router can discard these files whenever these files or these packets are discarded it will be filtered out and then a uh, number of packets are less so uh, this also helps to uh, maintain uh, or to prevent the congestion uh, in, uh, in the or network now the next is acknowledgement policy since the acknowledgement are also the part of the load in the network the acknowledgement policy imposed by the receiver may also affect the congestion several approaches can be used to prevent the congestion related to the acknowledgement the receiver should not send acknowledgement for n packets rather than sending the acknowledgement for a single packet the receiver should uh, send acknowledgement only if it has to send a packet or a timer expires so uh, the next issue is the acknowledgement policy uh, whenever a acknowledgement policy policy is imposed by the sender and the receiver so what will happen suppose i am a sender you are a receiver i send 100 packets towards your side suppose you receive all the 100 packets what will happen you send the 100 different acknowledgements for 100 packets so what will happen it is unnecessary load on the network that 100 packets are traveling from your side to my side only ensuring me that these are uh, received by the receiver 
and these acknowledgement packets can be received by the sender so to prevent uh, this method they only use a selective uh, acknowledgement or you can say only a defined acknowledgement for a single packet so what will happen suppose a uh, uh, 100 packets are sent from my side towards your side whenever uh, they are making the checkpoints on that checkpoints means suppose 1 to 10 packets are received by your side only in that case you have to send the acknowledgement for the 10th packet so what will happen i come to know when i when I, whenever i receive a acknowledgement of the 10th packet i automatically come to know that the first 10 packets are received by receiver so what will happen for 10 packets only one acknowledgement is there the load from receiver to sender side that is comes into the form of uh, acknowledgement that reduced by the 10 times so what will happen when transaction is completed 100 packets are sent from my side you received the 100 packets and in reverse i only receive the 100 acknowledgement oh, sorry i only receive the 10 acknowledgements so what will happen if uh, you are going to compare it with the normal process in that process 100 acknowledgements are received by the sender but in this pol uh, acknowledgement policy only the 10 acknowledgement packets can be received by the sender this is the fourth one now the last one is admission policy in admission policy a mechanism should be used to prevent the congestion basically we are uh, in admission policy a mechanism is used to prevent the congestion S uh, switches in a flow should first check the resource requirement of the network flow before transmitting it further if there is a chance of congestion or there is a congestion in the network router should deny establishing a virtual network connection to prevent further congestions what will happen in the case of admission policy they cannot admit the packets whenever a router if they might there are the number of chances for a congestion over the network so they didn't admit the new packets in the network they didn't admit the new packets in the network it means they are not going to make a virtual circuit between the new devices between the new user between the new sender and the new receiver they hold this sender for some time whenever the packets who are transmitted over the network when the value of these packets are goes down only in that condition they admit the new packets what it means they maintain the circuit between the sender and the receiver and only in that case they will start their transmission so this is the last one that is called the admission policy all the above policies are adopted to prevent the congestion before it happens in the network and these all policies they are adopted to prevent the congestion to prevent means before it happens we uh, we apply these policies for the congestion control before the congestion happens to in the network now the uh, second is the closed loop congestion it is uh, in this case closed loop congestion control technique is used to treat or elevate congestion after it happens now the scenario is changed now the congestion will happen in your network and now we are going to control this congestion several techniques are used by the different uh, protocols and uh, some of them are as let's start with the first one the first is the back pressure what is back pressure a, a back pressure is a technique in which a congested node stop receiving the packet from upstream node this may cause the upstream node or the nodes to be become congested and rejects the receiving data from above nodes so uh, the back back pressure is uh, basically a node to node connection control technique they can control the congestion in between from node to node and that uh, propagate in the opposite direction of the data flow so what it means that works in the opposite form of data flow for example if the data is flowed from Uh, right to, uh, to towards to the right side the back pressure will starts towards to the left side opposite to the data flow the back pressure technique can be applied only to a virtual circuit where each node has information of its above upstream nodes uh, back pressure techniques only we can be applied on that circuits where 
each node has the information about all the next nodes. Now from a diagram, it will be clear to everyone. Now look at the diagram. Suppose a data, uh, look at your screens, a data flow is there. Data flow means uh, this is the source. It is a destination. Now the data is traveled from source to the destination. So what will happen? Suppose whenever a congestion is occurred there, what will happen? Now they have the four different nodes in between them. This is the node number one, or you can say the system number one through which it crosses the data and reach to the dest destination. System number two, then system three, then system four. So whenever a source who sends the data, it crosses the full system and received to the destination point. So what will happen in the back pressure? First, it checks which node is congested. Now in this case, the third node is congested. This is called the congestion. The congestion will happen at the system number three that is present in between them. Suppose the system number third is congested. What will happen at the same time? First, it reject all the receiving packets. What it means? Node number three, or you can say the system number three, discarded all the receiving packets. First step. Now the second step. Second step is it retransmit the back, back pressure to its back node. So what will happen? It sends the message to the back node that not to accept the packets. Some type of congestion is occur there. So what will happen? That's why the arrows goes backwards. Now the message is flowed from the third system to the second system that I am overloaded and I'm not going to accept any other packet. You just stop sending the packets towards my side. Whenever a system two received the same message, it again convey the same message to the back node and the back node is system number one. And the same, same message is received by the system number one. So automatically it sends to the source. Whenever a message is received by the source, what will happen? Then source come to know that the system number three is over congested. Now I have to wait for some time and I'm not going to send any other uh, packets towards to the destination part. This is the process of back pressure. Clear? Yeah. Uh, now look at the description that is right uh, below the diagram. In the above diagram, the third node is congested and stop receiving packets. As a result, second node, node, node may be get congested due to the slowing down of the output data flow. Similarly, first known node may get the congested and informs the source to slow down. So what will happen? This is called the back pressure. What it means? The node, the third node is get congested. It back pressure to the second node that I'm not going to receive the packets. Same happened with the second to the first node. And again, that same happened to the source side. So what will happen? We can control the condition. Whenever the new packets are not coming towards the destination side, so we can manage the particular packets that are on transmission mode. They can be transmitted after some time. Again, the transmission is started between the same source and the destination. Now the uh, second method is choke packet technique. The choke packet technique is applicable to both virtual networks as well as datagram subnets. A choke packet is a packet sent by a node to the source to inform it of congestion. Each router monitor its resources and the utilization at each of its output lines. Whenever the resource utilization exceeds the threshold value, which is set by administrator, the router directly sends a choke packet to the source, giving it a feedback to reduce the traffic. The intermediate nodes through which the packet has traveled are not warned about the congestion. So uh, what will happen in the case of choke packet? Basically, uh, a choke packet is a packet sent by a node to inform about the congestion. Suppose whenever a congestion is happened and the node which is get con uh, congested or which is get congested, it only sent a single packet, a new packet. And the name of that new packet is choke packet. It sends the choke packet to the source. When it sends the choke packet to the source, whenever a threshold is there, threshold value means now 
the value is exceeds over the limits suppose at the same time every system has a limit to receive a 20 packets at the same time they go through with the 20 packet then they transmit these 20 packets and again able to receive all the 20 packets whenever a value is increases above 20 what will happen they exceed the threshold value whenever a threshold value is increased automatically that particular node send a packet that name of the packet is choke packet towards to the source part but one thing is different uh, one thing is different in this choke packet technique as compared to the back pressure what will happen in choke packet only that choke packet is received by the source so what will happen suppose look at your diagrams now the same case the third node get congested but if we use the choke packet technique what will happen they simply send that uh, they simply send the new packet that name is choke packet by the node number three towards to the source packet but in between they have the two different nodes node number two and node number one but the these intermediate nodes through which uh, the packet has traveled they are not warned about the congestion so what will happen they're not aware about the choke packet only this packet is received by the source so the node number one and node number two they continue doing their work only this packet is known by two words two nodes the first is who sends that node who is congested and second is the source because it sends that particular node towards to the source side so this is all about the open loop techniques